<laughs> so I guess we may start. Uh, hello and welcome to this talk. My name is Stefan Seifert, or Nine on IRC. I've been a Pro 5 developer for about 15 years now. In about half of this time, I've been watching and following the development of Pro 6. I've been to YAPSIS and workshops and whenever people like Masek or Jonathan or any of the other Pro 6 people were there, I've seen talks about great features in Pro 6 and I've wanted to try them for many years. But whenever I started thinking about finally trying Pro 6, I quickly ran into the same problem. Some library was missing. Um, maybe DBI or Catalyst or um, the Petal template module or Mail IMAP client. And at this year's YAPSI EU in Sofia, I finally started doing something about it. And what started there as a very fancy Hello World quickly evolved into a module that gave this talk its title, Inline Pro 5. So a couple of weeks later, uh, I was at a point where I could seriously start thinking about Porting a catalyst based web application to Perl 6. And today I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Catalyst, of course, is one of the oldest and most powerful MVC frameworks for Perl. And the application I'd at some point like to port is CIDR Webmail, a very nice webmailer I and a friend of mine wrote a couple years back. So, where do you start with this? Um, Catalyst creates a startup script for you to run your application with a Perl based web server. So let's have a quick look at this. As you can see, the script is fairly simple. In essence, it's just loading a module and calling a method which then goes on to do the real work. So how would this look like in Perl 6? It could look like this. Um, as you can see, I changed the uh, Perl to Perl 6 in the Shebang line. <coughs> uh, setting the environment variable just got translated to a slightly different syntax. And then uh, load inline Perl 5, uh, create a P5 object, which is just representing the Perl 5 interpreter, and call its run method, giving it a block of Perl 5 code in the form of a string. So, okay, time for a live demo. As you can see, it takes a couple of seconds to start. Most of this time is actually loading rules and catalyst and the application. Uh, get this prepared here, so I can log in into the webmail and I can read my very interesting emails. Great, I can now read my emails using Perl 6. <laughs> I could stop here and call it job done and get to lunch, but um, if you see my lightning talk at, at Yapsi, this is rather boring because this already worked a couple of hours after the first commit. So what happens since then in the like two months? Um, let's have another look at our little startup script. Um, inline Perl 5 provides a bit of sugar to um, make the code less evilish. So there's now the use method, which does exactly the same as the use statement in Perl 5. You load a module. And there's the invoke method, which you can use to invoke a method on a package or object. So you just give it the name of the, of the package in this case, the name of the mo uh, method, and some additional arguments. So another example using this capability, um, in this case I literally use the petal module. I again use invoke to call the constructor and get a template object back. And as you can see, if you look closely, um, this is a Perl 5 object, but I can still use it as if it were a Perl 6 object and call a method using the period as method call operator and just feed it some data for the template, in this case a hash ref containing a list and I get a result back that I can just save. So with this you can already use 
a large number of CPAN modules, including DBI and even DBX class. But um, coming back to Catalyst, um, it's not enough because some modules require you to actually subclass them. And in Catalyst, this would be the, the model view and controller classes, which are subclasses of the corresponding Catalyst classes. For example, controllers are subclasses of Catalyst controller. So, how do you subclass a Pro 5 class in Pro 6? Um, Inline Pro 5 provides a role called Pro 5 parent. Um, by consuming this role, you tell Inline Pro 5 that your class should act like it was a subclass of a Pro 6 class. If you call a method on an object of this class, it's either implemented by the class itself or delegated to the underlying Pro 5 object. In memory, it looks a little bit like this. We have the Pro 6 object containing the Pro 5 object of the base class. Now, if you pass this Pro 6 object to Pro 5 code, it gets wrapped another time in the Pro 5 wrapper class that just always delegates to the Pro 6 class. So the Pro 6 class can decide if it can do this method itself or should delegate it further. So, This is quite nice. It allows you to, for example, use uh, HTML parser in Pro 6, but it's not enough for Catalyst, because Catalyst is based on Moose, and it uses class mobs introspection capabilities to find the action methods that actually implement the handler for the web requests. And it also uses uh, Pro 5's subroutine attributes to find the information about how to map a URL to these action methods. But Pro 6 does not support subroutine attributes, and class mob only supports classes it's self created. So, what I did was write a class a Pro 6 mob, which is a replacement for class mob in Pro 6. And if you cannot read this slide, it's, it's okay, because it's really just a couple of one-liner methods. Because Pro 6, luckily, already supports meta objects and introspection and all this stuff. So all I really had to do was map one API to another. What I then did is this thing down here. I just tell ClassMob to use this meta class for objects of a certain class. <coughs> so now Catalyst can find the action methods, but it still doesn't really know how to map the URLs to those action methods because of the missing subroutine attributes. But um, Pro6 does not support attributes, but it has something better called traits. Traits, in essence, allow you to attach information to any kind of objects, including map classes and methods, because those are objects too in Pro 6. So I wrote a couple of traits. Um, they just attach uh, attributes to an object and uh, add a role to this object. In this case, um, the Pro 5 attributes role, which really just stores this information for querying by Perl 6 mob. So this is enough for a catalyst to find your action methods and know how to actually use them. So with this, we really can write a catalyst controller in Perl 6. But there's one tiny annoying issue left. Um, catalyst, like probably most frameworks, automatically loads uh, modules in the controller view and model namespaces. But obviously, it expects these modules to be written in Pro 5. So these Pro 5 modules can then load the Pro 6 modules and, and pass it on. But that's tedious. And you sort of have to uh, keep the, the same class structure twice. But inline Pro 5 to the rescue, it automatically creates a package called v6 inline. 
by saying use v6 inline, you tell it that the rest of your file is written in Perl 6. <laughs> <laughs> so we can now store our Perl 6 code in the same modules that get automatically loaded by Catalyst. And if you look closely, it supports another very nice feature of Perl 6, one of my most favorite. If you look here, you don't have to add the <laughs> Because v6 inline is implemented as a source filter, and it replaces all this Perl 6 code by a static 1. <laughs> I know source filters are evil and all that, but I guess in this case it's quite okay. So, time for another live demo. And this time I remember to kill the other server before I start a new one. Uh, the demo application using v6 inline um, reads an aw stats a cache file using a Prod6 grammar and displays it using an SVG module with a nice graph of well, requests per day. So this stuff works and it's really all I need to finally get into Prod6. So I've talked about a lot of things that now work. Question remains, what doesn't? And there are some obvious answers. Source filters, would be highly surprised to find Perl 6 code, so they are out of the picture. Um, I guess pretty much everything in the devil namespace is just too low level to really be useful in a Perl 6 program. And by its very nature, the Perl 6 namespace is kind of obsolete because we don't need backported features, we have the real stuff. And as I mentioned, uh, everything based on introspection may need a bit help by you, like my class, uh, my Pro 6 mark thing. So that's inline Pro 5. Another question that could come up is are there alter alternatives? And it turns out there is one. If you don't need XS, you could, for example, use V5. V5 is a re-implementation of Perl 5 written in Perl 6. It uses a Perl 6 grammar to pass Perl 5 code and compile, compile it into the same abstract syntax tree as Perl 6 code. So it allows you to use the specializer, the just-in-time compiler, and maybe even the threading support that Perl 6 enjoys. So in theory, this could at least allow your Perl 5 code to even be faster than in native Perl 5. So in the long term, I would suggest using v5 whenever you can, but if you can't, for example, because you need XS, use inline Perl 5. So what remains? What's for the future? Um, Inline Pro 5 already does pretty much everything I need to finally get into Pro 6. That's what I wanted. So its future development will be influenced mostly by its users and feedback. That is you, hopefully. Um, some ideas are already on the table, like importing symbols from Pro 5 into Pro 6. Uh, maybe this sounds fairly straightforward to implement, so I'm going to give it a try sometime. Um, Synopsis 1 calls for sort of transparent backwards compatibility. It calls for Perl 6 to assume code to be written in Perl 5 unless there's a clear indication otherwise, like a class keyword or use v6. I would very much like Perl 6 to just transparently fall back to using inline Perl 5 if it sees Perl 5 code. So you don't have to think about in which version of our language is this written, but just call it. And of course, like with everything in Pro 5, performance is very high on the to-do list. So, to sum it up, I consider the module ecosystem problem to be solved. Um, piecemeal upgrading of an existing Pro 5 codebase is indeed possible. 
and it's what I'm going to spend much time on in the future. Um, even if you need advanced things like subclassing, this is doable, and even better integration is upcoming. The code, of course, is online. You can find it on GitHub, or you can just install it using Panda, the Perl 6 module installer. And you can, of course, also find my slides on there. Thank you very much. So, which questions may I answer? So, um, well, actually two really, uh, which are related to this, but um, the first one is um, exceptions and stuff like that, how does that work across boundaries and also related to that, stack traces, do they look crazy or do they work at all? Or? <laughs> okay, uh, first one, uh, do exceptions work uh, and how do they look like? Yes, they do work, uh, if you do, uh, and have you have, if you have an exception in Perl 5 code, like die something, um, it gets translated into a Perl 6 exception, an untyped exception with your error message as a string. A Perl 6 exception is an object like everything in Perl 6, and it gets thrown and you can catch it with uh, eval in Perl 5. Of course, it's an object, so uh, you may sometimes, instead of a real error message, just get this uh, Perl 6 exception thing that you have co to call stringify on. Um, this is an area where I do want to put some more work in, maybe make it even more transparent. And the second part of your question about stack traces, um, Pro 5 exceptions show your Pro 5 stack trace with the Pro 6 part missing and the other way around. And that's also one of the things I want to give a try to unify those and have full stack traces and exceptions. That's going to be interesting. Okay, there was another question somewhere. So, if you've got access working, presumably you actually have a separate Perl 5 VM running alongside Perl 6. Um, that's exactly what I'm doing, yes. Um, if you read the Perl embed man page, that's where I started. How is, is installation working? If, like, if you, is this, you already have Catalyst installed as Perl 5? and then you're running that. So as you're doing this, you're not running the test suite through Perl 6, is that correct? Or can you? No, no. no. If, uh, I'm not sure I understand your question. Really. You install Catalyst with the Perl 5 yeah. package manager, and then you write your Perl 6 thing, mm -hmm. whatever, you run it with the Perl 6 VM. You, don't, you theoretically could, try to run the per 5 compilation and installation under the per 6 VM VM. No. <laughs> <laughs> it would work, but it would be just wasted work because if you have an installation system, just you say, yeah. you need per 5 anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, you do. Uh, am I right that in one C, um, Turns the C code into XS, and therefore that would just work. Um, That's the project that um, probably yes. Whatever thing is at the moment working on. Oh, it should um, still work. What I've already done uh, from a lightning talk at Yapsi is use inline Python, the module for Perl five, and use it from within inline Perl five. <laughs> <laughs> I've never written any XS code, but I've written quite a lot of inline C. So I would guess yes, since XS works, inline C should too. And uh, speaking of inline Python, um, there's also an inline Python now for Perl 6. Because it just seems like very little work to do, and it actually is. It's not as far developed as inline Perl 5, but it's, it's probably just a day or two missing. So if you have some nice Python library that you want to use, you can do it from both within Perl 5 and Perl 6. Mm -hmm. When you were responding to the exception question, mm -hmm. I took um, what you said to me, you can throw unless exceptions in Perl 5. If you throw a blessed object in Perl 5, is it translated to and put it in Perl 6? 
like any object you pass from Pro 5 to Pro 6, it, it gets wrapped and you can use it like it was a Pro 6 object, yes. Aaron? Um, is it possible to, uh, to have Pro 5 code uh, if you can say if $x is a Perl 6 object and Perl 5 code does $x plus 3, does that invoke uh, an overloaded operator that was defined in, uh, in the Perl 6 objects class? That is, how, how well does operator overloading work across boundaries? That's an interesting question. I guess it does not yet. But it sounds like an interesting user-driven feature. <laughs> <laughs> user I would not have thought about this, no. Then again, in Perl 5, operators are just weirdly named functions. So if you install them in the wrapper, they will yes. get sold. Use overloading does, or use overload does, does some magic. Oh, yeah, it's a magic map in the symbol table. And as I understood the question, it was more like uh, if the operator is overloaded in Perl 6. If it, yeah, yeah your wrapper just has to translate the, the entry points. Yeah. Okay. So this, this might be rather simple. <laughs> I hope it's simple. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably just have to, to do all the overloading stuff in, in Perl 6 object, that's the, the class, the wrapper class, and pass it on. Wait, and it had, that would then have to fall back to um, emulating the Perl 5 behavior when, when there isn't an overloaded operator available that's in Perl 6 class. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's an afternoon's work, right? With respect to the overloading on the Perl 6 class, you can just install the relevant overloading on the Perl 5 wrapper so that yeah, okay. it doesn't have the overloads that the Perl 6 class doesn't have. Mm. And then Perl just does its thing. You have to live with the overloading that was set up in Perl 5, it should be fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I definitely have to try this <laughs> just to see how it works out. So or I don't have to send you a patch. <laughs> <laughs> I would be appreciated very much. <laughs> Is there any other question? Okay, then let's have a half hour break. Thank you.